There is a difference between accuracy and precision, and these two words should not be used interchangeably. Accuracy describes how close you are to a known value. For example, here's an archer who is rather accurate with his aim, but not very precise. Precision, on the other hand, refers to how reliably you can get the same results, over and over again. For example, here's an archer who is very precise with his aim, but unfortunately he's not very accurate. In science, it is our objective to gather lab data that is both accurate and precise, but sometimes this ability is limited by the measuring instruments that we use, like in today's lab. If you're conducting this experiment from home, what you'll need is an unmarked meter stick, a 30 centimeter ruler that measures in centimeters, and a small ruler that measures in millimeters. To make an unmarked meter stick at home, find a piece of string and a measuring tape. Cut the string at the one meter mark, and you're done. If you don't have a centimeter ruler or a millimeter ruler at home, don't worry. I'll include a PDF in the description box below so you can print it out on your own. Let's go through an exercise of how to improve the precision of a measuring device. Here we have a mystery foot. Depending upon whether if you're watching this video on a cell phone, a computer screen, or a big TV, you can't tell the scale of this foot. So here's a reference of a meter for you. Oops, it's been accidentally dipped into purple paint. We can't say that the foot is zero meters long, and it's unfair to say that it's one meter long. Even though we're limited by the instrumental precision of this device, we can get closer to the real answer by estimating the foot's height. In general, with large measuring scales like the meter, or even in centimeters, you can improve the precision of the device by mentally dividing the ruler up into 10 smaller parts. In other words, you can improve the precision by estimating to the nearest tenth. Please don't cheat by placing markings on your ruler. Now some viewers may say that the height of the foot is 0.5 meters tall, and others may say that the height is closer to 0.6 meters. In either case, 0.5 meters and 0.6 meters is closer to the real height of the foot as opposed to saying that the foot is just 1 meter tall or 0 meters tall. Whenever you estimate your measurement to the nearest tenth, your error or uncertainty could be as far off as a tenth as well. Regardless of whether your final answer is 0.5 plus minus 0.1 meter or 0.6 plus minus 0.1 meter, both are much closer to the real height of the foot. To keep things clean, we'll just keep the 0.6 plus minus 0.1 here. What if we upgrade and use an even more precise ruler, like a meter stick with only centimeter markings? Looking more closely at the ruler, we notice that the foot is greater than 57 centimeters, but is less than 58. Instead of stating our final answer as either 57 or 58, we can improve the precision of our measurement by estimating another digit. Here, it looks like the foot is 57 and 3 tenths of a centimeter. So we'll state our final answer as 57.3 centimeters, as 57.3 is much closer to the real height of the foot than 57 or 58. Just remember that if you estimate to the nearest tenth, then your uncertainty could be off as a tenth as well. Lastly, let's say that we have a really, really nice meter stick with markings in millimeters. Looking closely at the ruler again, there's still a gap between 572 and 573 millimeters, so we shouldn't be rounding to the nearest millimeter. Instead, we can still attain a bit more precision by estimating yet another digit. However, in this case, it's too difficult to estimate to the nearest tenth of a millimeter, so instead, we'll reduce our certainty down to the nearest half of a millimeter. If you think the measurement is closer to the midpoint between 572 and 573, then state your final answer as 572.5 millimeters. Or if you think the measurement is closer to 572, then state your final answer as 572.0 millimeters. Just remember that in both cases, if you're estimating to the nearest half of a millimeter, then your uncertainties are also off by a half a millimeter. The zero is important here in the second answer, as 572 is only three significant figures, Meanwhile, 572.0 is four significant figures. As you can see with all these examples, we have improved both our certainty and precision by an extra digit. One rule to keep in mind is that the precision of your final answer should be the same precision as your uncertainty. So far, we've been talking about instrumental uncertainty, 
which are the errors in the measuring device itself. But there can be human errors as well. However, don't call these errors human errors in science class. Instead, we call them procedural errors. In this lab, there are two types of procedural errors, parallax error and lift error. Parallax error is the error due to the observer not looking square into the ruler, resulting in an overestimation or underestimation of the actual value. Depending upon how far away the object is from the ruler, a parallax error of as much as one centimeter is reasonable. But you'll want to aim for a parallax error of less than a millimeter. If you can, try to bring the ruler as close as possible to the object to reduce parallax error. The other type of procedural error is lift error. Every time you lift and reuse your measuring device, there might be a misalignment between the previous markings and the new zero reference. If you're careful, you might have a lift error of around one millimeter, but if you're not careful, your lift error may be as far off as two centimeters per lift. We need to keep both instrumental error and procedural error in mind when we conclude with our final measurement. How about we go through one example together? Let's say you measure the height of someone with an unmarked meter stick. It's unfair to say that they're only one meter tall, and it's also unfair to say that they are two meters tall. A more reasonable estimate would be 1.7 meters. Since we've estimated to the nearest tenth of a meter, the instrumental error would also be a tenth of a meter. Notice that the units are not written down here. Instead, all units are to be placed at the header of the table to keep the table neat and tidy. The ruler was lifted once during the experiment, and the lift error was around one centimeter per lift. But we won't be writing down our answers in centimeters here, as we'll need to keep the header column consistent. And since we're using an unmarked meter stick, we'll stick to meters. So the total lift error is 0.01 .01 meters. If you're careful with alignment, a parallax error of 0.01 .01 meter is reasonable. The total uncertainty is the sum of all instrumental and procedural uncertainties. Now a total uncertainty of plus minus 0.12 is a little too exact. There is no way to know that you're exactly up to 12 centimeters off. Think about it this way. If you knew that you were exactly 12 centimeters off from the correct measurement, why not just add or subtract 12 from your final answer to get back to the correct measurement? As a general rule, all uncertainties should be rounded to one significant figure. So 0.12 will round to 0.1. The final statement for this person's height would therefore be 1.7 meters plus minus 0.1 meter. Repeat these measurements for all three objects with an unmarked meter stick, a centimeter ruler, and then finally with a millimeter ruler. Remember that the header for the centimeter ruler table should have units in centimeters, and that the header for the millimeter ruler table should have units in millimeters. Also, keep in mind that your total uncertainty should be one significant figure, and that your final measure must share the same precision as your total uncertainty. If you haven't done so, please read through the instructions on course pack page 6 before you begin your lab, and read the lab report formatting rules on course pack page 13 before you submit in your report. I'll see you in the next episode.